So we're having a look at the basic stance or the posture now. Um, and as you can tell from the manuscript, the stance is relatively wide, something like this. It's like two and a half to three um, shoulder lengths, one could say. And uh, the distance between the feet in this direction, so this direction, is roughly one shoulder width. So you don't want to make it any more narrow or even cross the feet. Um, what's interesting concerning our feet, they're both parallel and they're both slightly angled towards the middle line one could say. So when I'm standing like this with the right foot forward, middle line would be here, both feet are angled to this way, left foot forward, same thing. So the rear foot is never here or here. This way it's also easier to keep the knee tracking, so the knee is in one line with the foot. When we're going down, we're sitting down more on the rear leg, something like this. This is a bit like in rape here. So this would be central, this would be on the forefront, we don't want this kind of um, posture, we want to sit like here. This means this knee is slightly more bent than this one. This one is not straight, it always has a bit of a bend, and it never goes above the forward ankle, the ankle of this foot. So we're sitting like this, and imagining it as a sitting, you rather want to be lower than higher, and it always feels like you're sitting um, already uh, low, but you're not in fact. So always low, that's a good idea. Our arms are here in the front, elbows closed, as I demonstrate here, elbows closed. This also means usually that your shoulders remain very uh, low. So you don't want to raise your shoulders. Um, it's not healthy in the long run. And of course, if you have sort of buckle in your hands, you're uh, likely getting blind while fighting because you have the weapons in front of your um, face. Concerning the position of your arms, they're of course more or less outstretched, not completely, but let's say in a relaxed stretch like this. They're in front of your body, that's important. You don't want your elbows to stick out, you want them to remain inside, which also, by the way, pulls your shoulder down, which is a good thing, not least because you don't raise your weapons in front of your eyes. Then. So, you might find it easier to bring your arms forward and pull them in like this, so the arm is in a way locked into the shoulder from the front, rather than having a chest like this and pulling them up from below. This feels a bit more restricted. If you do it like from above and pull them in like this, this feels more natural and it feels stronger. So you're able to resist pressure from, the, um, from your opponent if it should occur. So one of the ways that I explained how you adopt that kind of posture, this particular stance, is imagine you are sitting on a really wide horse, something like this. And now, with your feet parallel and uh, your upper body straight, you start to turn on the balls of your feet so that you are facing to one side. As you do this, you want to pay attention to the front knee. It must not start to move over the front foot as Cornelius has already pointed out. So we don't want to get into any kind of lunging position ever. We don't do this here. We move and we keep the weight to the rear foot. So moving into this position, most of the weight is distributed um, to the rear leg. In fact, I imagine that there is a little stool placed next to my rear foot and I'm sitting down with my butt onto this stool. This is what brings me into this position. So as you can see, when I do this sitting down motion, the butt goes back. At the same time, you note that the shoulders don't. And this is relevant because the position of our shoulders has most impact on our reach, on our weapon reach.
I would also like to address a number of typical mistakes that could occur as you adopt this stance. First off, as you move down to adopt this stance, make sure that your upper body is leaning forward, not to the side. Oftentimes, people, as they move down, tend to lean in such a fashion that the upper body is over the space that is not supported by your legs which of course makes it rather unstable. So we don't want to stand anything like this with the butt popping out to the side and the upper body falling into a void which is not supported by your legs. Instead, think of the side of your chest, think of your nipple moving towards your thigh. So if this part moves towards the thigh, then that means that your torso, your chest, is actually supported by both legs. And there's one more thing you want to watch out for when adopting this posture and this um, concerns your hip alignment which is usually at a 45 degree angle compared to your opponent you could say. So you're like this, you're not folding um, up like this, you're not collapsing like this either. You're staying in the middle of both extremes as it were and this gives you a nice basic tension which keeps you stable in the middle. What is this peculiar stance good for, you might ask? Um, of course, it's not good for jumping around, but we don't want to do that anyway. But what you can do with it is influence the measure, the distance to your opponent, even without taking a step. And we do this by a combination of two basic movements. The first is shifting your hips back and forth like this. This is very minimal. I'm not going to extremes here either. I'm not going forward into a large position where my knee is above the ankle. I'm staying in between these positions. And now I'm combining it with um, another motion, which is a forward motion of the torso, which comes from the hip. So my back remains straight as it is. I'm not slouching. With the straight back, I can lean forward using my hip as a hinge and it looks like a pair of scissors you could say with the leg here and the torso here we are folding together and when I combine these two movements I can actually bridge a lot of distance again without taking a step I'm very stable here and of course at this position as well and at some point, this can make a difference between being hit or not being hit. Because this body movement is of course much faster than um, taking a step from this stance. Like with any physical activity, there are various ways to describe what you are actually doing. So the way, the way that I like to look at it is this. So regarding this particular forward and back motion, if I receive pressure, I first sink down, so my hip goes down. Then next I start to shift back, so the hip moves into this direction. And as I start to move forward again, I lift myself and then it moves forward again. So you could say, you could say that there is kind of an oval motion going on here with my hip. Yeah.
Then there are a couple of typical mistakes that I want to address here as well. So I've already talked about not leaning to the side. So remember, you don't want to lean over to the unsupported space here. With this particular motion of moving back and forth, what you don't want to do is you don't want to shift your hip in such a fashion that you end up with all the weight on the front leg because that's rather unstable. Now it feels awkward. There's a restriction here so your muscles don't feel very mobile here anymore and all the weight is on the front foot. It also, it also feels awkward because this leg is rather stretched. So don't do this. Don't get into this position. As you move forward, rather sink. And don't go here. Squeeze. Oh, really unstable and feels awkward. So whenever you have this sensation that as you go into uh, hip hinging 133 kind of position and you extend forward in order to say deliver a thrust and it feels like mm, it's unstable then this is probably because your hip is moving up and over the front foot and this is not what we what we want yeah so this leg must not be fully extended either so don't lock this knee one thing you will probably notice is that when you lean onto your front leg, you will feel a tension here on the back of your thighs in the so-called hamstrings. So this is perfectly normal for a modern, most modern people. Um, this is just a regular stretch. This is no sign of doing something wrong. Um, but of course, just in case, when you're not sure, consult a doctor. Um, usually, we need the range of motion here. So these are strings, all, everything that goes around here, this is stretched when you're leaning forward. And you can try to improve um, your range of motion by sinking down like this in uh, slow controlled movements, like every time you're breathing out you can do go lower. But you can of course also do some research on the internet uh, find some stretching tutorials when you're looking for hamstrings there are tons of them and you can do this as a preparation because you will only benefit from it and if we have a look at historical images both in um, uh, our manuscript 133 but also uh, when we see the fighters outside this book in marginal illustrations for instance or if you have depictions of um, people doing actual um, manual labor, be it farmers, craftsmen and so on, you will find this sort of body movement in history all over the place.